Hello, everyone. My name is Elizaveta Vasilenko. I'm going to present you my joint work with Nikki Vazu and Jill Bart on couple refinement types. Uh, let's imagine we have two basketball players who are throwing a ball to a basket with different ch chances of success, B less or equal to Q. We ask them to perform and throw each. And then um, I'm interested about two comparison questions about the results. So if we knew the inequality between the chances of success, does it necessarily imply the inequality between the results? Or even more, if we knew the difference between the chances of success, can we know the difference between the results in the end? So this sort of question can be called a relational question. And the possible pairs here are the um, illustration of a probabilistic process. So in this talk, I'm going to present a library for verification of probabilistic programs in Haskell, uh, which I do in relational style. And I also do it using Haskell itself. In this talk, I continue with the balls and beans example to show you the example of verification using safe coupling. And then I explain how we use this library for more real world examples from machine learning. So to define a probabilistic program, I will need a bunch of primitives at the very least. I want to simulate the process of throwing a ball to a bin, which is going to be a Bernoulli distribution, um, shortened as burn. It's a flip the coin distribution. It takes the first argument probability, P, and returns the integer of uncertain value. It can be one with probability P and zero with probability one minus P. So the PRM I use as a type for uncertainty. And since I promised to use Haskell as the verification means, I will need a more elaborate type system. I will use refinement types, which is provided by Haskell plugin liquid Haskell. So the new probability type here is a typical refinement type. It has two components. The first one is the usual Haskell type, a double, we give it a name B. And then the second component of refinement type is a predicate that says that this double always has to be between zero and one. Then the return type of Bernoulli also changes. We had then certain integer, and now we also know that it's necessarily zero or one. I define a monad interface for my type PRM. So the pure is a singleton distribution. It takes one element of type A and produces a distribution which is A with probability one. A bind is a sampling operation. So I have a distribution of elements A and a function that can operate on a single sample from that distribution. And result is the result of sampling one element from the first distribution and applying the function. So now that we defined all the primitives, we are ready to define the probabilistic program, which is going to simulate one basketball player. Here I use a do notation, which is a shorthand for two bind operations, and the primitives are in blue. So this function takes the number of throws, the probability of success, and returns the score, which is probabilistic. In the base case, we didn't do any throws, so the result is constant zero score. Uh, in the inductive case, we sample from recursive call, we sample from Bernoulli distribution, flip the coin, we add the results, add the results, and that's our result of throws. So uh, remember, we had two basketball players and the relational property about them. It becomes the relational property between two programs. So now we're interested to find out how the result of program bins with parameter P relates to program bins with parameter Q. And there is a very elegant way to um, verify such relational properties about programs, which is called relational types. So what the typing judgment of relational type means is that in some sort of typing environment, we can compare left-hand side program with its type to right-hand side program with its type with some relational assertion, which is very commonly a Boolean assertion, which says that one is in some sense better than the other, I mean the expression, or oops, Oh, sorry, about, sorry, I need to go back. Um, so the other common um, way to define an assertion is a numeric assertion, which puts the uh, numeric measure on the extent of difference between two expressions, left and right. So in my system, um, I combine these two common approaches with a single connective, uh, which consists of a real value, K, 
and Boolean P. Um, I define this connective inductively on types of expressions. So for example, for numeric types uh, for primitive, which includes numeric. <laughs> um, I require that there is a distance function. In this example, distance of natural numbers is uh, absolute value of the difference between two natural numbers. Um, and the meaning of the judgment, the interpretation, is that this distance should be less or equal to numeric bound k. And also, the predicate, which is a Haskell Boolean expression, um, should evaluate to true, which we check statically. So now that I have uh, defined the meaning for the primitive types, I go and lift it to monadic types. So for two expressions that are distributions, I say that this judgment means that there must exist a Kantorovich coupling of two distributions represented by left and right expression. What's a coupling? Imagine our left expression was the flip the coin of a balanced silver coin, and our right expression is the coin that commonly, um, more frequently ends up um, heads up. <laughs> um, now, the coupling will be a distribution on pairs. So we flip both coins at the same time, and we want the relation. So how, how probable it is that one coin is zero, the other is one, it's A. Oh, no, it's C. <laughs> um, yes, so in addition to be a correct coupling, uh, this distribution on pairs need to satisfy four more equations here. Uh, which intuitively mean that if you ignore the result of one coin, this distribution will be equal to our initial. So if we ignore the golden coin, then we just add the probabilities in the rows and it should be one half and one half. Now, there can be, in general case, more than one solution to the system of equations. And we put additional constraints on the requirement for coupling. Um, so first of them is that every pair in the coupling, the samples of the um, pairs, which are now primitives, they should satisfy the predicate if they have non-zero probability in mu. And the second requirement is that expectation of distance, which is, again, on samples from mu, which are primitives, um, expectation of this distance should be less or equal to k. So this is the meaning of the judgment. And um, now, as I promised, we're going to verify our system in Haskell, so I need to translate it to our refinement type system. So first of all, I translate our typing rules, which I have for each of the primitives, such as, for example, Bernoulli distribution. Um, this typing rule for Bernoulli distribution says that um, Kantorovich distance between two calls to Bernoulli um, is less or equal to absolute value of the difference of the arguments. And the lifted relation, the predicate, is less or equal if we knew that arguments of Bernoulli were also related by this inequality. So it translates to two assumptions in liquid Haskell using the keyword assume. So this one on the slide, it tells me the distance bound. That in the result uh, type of this assumption, you can see the same uh, inequality that we required for the meaning of the judgment. So having the building blocks as typing rules, we are now uh, ready to prove our statement about uh, bins. So this is how you write the theorem statement, pretty much the same, but it doesn't use the assume keyword, which means that we actually need to prove this statement. So what the statement tells is, again, that the distance between two runs of the programs, bins p and bins q, can be upper bounded by n multiplied by q minus p. This is what we're going to prove, and in the assumptions, as we had before, p less or equal to q. Um, going to the proof, uh, and I will start by syntax-directed fashion. So if the program that you see um, on the top had two cases, I will also start with the two cases in my proof. First of them, the base case, where uh, the program was just um, singleton distribution. So luckily, I have typing rule for this primitive, uh, which says that distance between two singleton distributions is the same as distance between their elements. In our case, 0 and 0. And their natural number, so it's just none. So this case is proved. Now, to showcase that we also support non syntax directed proofs, the inductive case will be a little bit different. In the inductive case, I 
still want to prove the distance between beans P and beans Q, and I do it through the intermediary, um, through the function in the middle, the ghost function that I synthetically construct. And I upper bound the distance between initial functions by two pairs of distances. So mathematically, it would be um, called a triangular inequality. I apply it in the first line with the ghost function, then estimate the uh, distance bounds for two components, and the result is the boundary that I, expect, I expected. Uh, now, it translates to liquid Haskell almost literally using the operators for inequality. It's equal, less, equal. And I can also supply the auxiliary statements such as the triangular inequality, which we have for distance class and um, theorems about left comparison and right comparison with a question mark. So that concludes the proof for bins. Now I promised the machine learning algorithms. Um, I'm going to explain stochastic gradient descent, which is very popular, very wide used um, classic algorithm from machine learning. Uh, so it's algorithm of function optimization, which takes four arguments. First of them is a good function. Um, I call it Lipschitz. Um, it has two parameters, the data point and the vector of weights, returns it above. So our goal is to make the function output better results on data points. And we can achieve that by adjusting weights. So we want to find a good weight uh, for the function. We are given a data set on which we can trial run the function. And then we are given the initial weight, which we can try to optimize. The function SGD performs n steps of optim optimization. Each of them um, has a certain influence on the outcome, uh, which is supplied by the final argument, the, the list of um, step sizes, the influences. Now, uh, what I would like to prove about that is that um, the function performs good on all data points, not just the data points from the data set. So it would be good that for any other data set, the result would be roughly the same as with the certain data set that was supplied. So what I say in the stability property is that if you have two different data sets, which differ in exactly one element, then the distance between two calls of SGD, which have other parameters same, can be upper bounded by some constant, non-dependent on, on the data set. So in the right-hand side, we see the uh, expression that depends on Lipschitz function on f, obviously a constant, and um, a value that depends on number of iterations and step sizes. So it does not depend on the data set, which is good for machine learning algorithms. So this is the kind of property we can prove using our library. Um, a table for examples, which I briefly mentioned here. So the bins dist, which I presented as example, the SGD, uh, which I presented now, and bin spec is that component of proving that one call to bins always returns something less or equal to the second call of bins. I skipped this proof, but we also have that. Um, so interesting part about this table, it compares the size of program to size of proof to the compilation time. And for bins dist, I presented the non-syntax directed proof, which was interesting and good to have. Um, but the point is that relational types are particularly good for syntax directed proofs. So for bin spec, the proof is terribly boring. It's almost the same structure and the same size as the program. And this is where relational types shine. So they uh, significantly improve the size of the proof. So in SGD, we have a mix of both. So the proof is supposedly uh, shorter, compiles faster than you would have without our relational system. So in the paper, <laughs> I don't have time to cover now, but uh, it's interesting how our P and K components of the connective relate to each other and how we use this uh, interaction between them to prove our different case study, the uh, convergence of a certain reinforcement learning algorithm. Then our highlight is bind rule since we are a higher order system, which allows us to infer rules for functor and applicative interfaces as well. Um, and so with that, I presented this higher order relational probabilistic type system. I encoded it um, as assumptions in liquid Haskell, which allowed me both syntax directed and non syntax directed proofs. And I explored the usability of library with uh, several case studies. Um, thanks. Please free to, feel free to contact us and for more liquid Haskell, visit Haskell Symposium. <laughs>